Okay guys, I'm a bit late to get into filming today. A lot of people were here. I just started working on my car. But I got the subframe out and I'm about to start cutting it for the FDF rack relocation. To move my rack 50 mil forward. So I got the subframe all marked with this lines. I'm just following the FDF YouTube video on how to do it from my boy Cam. So we're gonna get this done real quick. And after a lot of cutting and grinding, we have our subframe all ready for the rack relocation. Basically, it makes it so that your rack is now in line with your subframe pickup points to move it forward to just give better rack angle for steering so better steering feel everything like that and it is all ready now to be welded so i've officially got oh yep that was good our rack relocation fully welded in it uses the factory mount here and then just fdf made a new fill a mount for this side of the rack but it's all fully welded good to go now for the task of just cleaning up this portion to make it look better and give the pan clearance in here i am building plates just to box in the front here just so nothing can really get in there but right now i'm just filling up the plate seeing where gaps are grinding to get this to sit flat and as low as possible and then i'll weld it in and make the other plates okay so i've got rough template made and as you can see it's not really gonna be able to go and curve into there very nicely so what i'll do is i'll just plate it first then i'll probably grind a pocket and then just make a plate that sits in there so it still recesses a little bit but I'm gonna get this one cut and keep going. All the plates have now been made and it is ready for me to weld. That was a lot of welding. I got it all done. I did all it in one shot. So the subframe is now fully welded. I'm just gonna have to scuff it up, hit it with some steel it before I throw it back in just because it will be the last time, hopefully, that I have to take this thing out of the car. We have got the subframe back in the car. Uh, right after work, I just had a couple of the guys, Chris, Cricket, and Ryan, and Omar help me put the subframe in the car so they could hold all the control arms out then help me put all that in. Just to make it easier so I didn't really film it, we got steering column all hooked up and now I'm just pulling out the one motor mount because it needed to be raised a little bit because the motor wasn't at the correct angle so I have pulled it out now and I made a little spacer for it and I'm just over here TIG welding it we got dash 16 fittings on all of our coolant ports Cricket welded on all that for me I'm throwing some clips of him welding it. So now we are ready to get the cooling system going. And I took this off the radiator. I'm going to use this as a template for the shroud. The shroud is basically going to be very simple, flat. It's going to have bends on each side just to go down to pick up on these bolt holes and then we got some small fans that I'm gonna put on here race fans they should clear everything looks good I'm just gonna get a shroud made real quick and see where we go from there I used the CSF plate as a template to just make this because it was perfect fit to the radiator and now I just had to come over to Adam's shop so that I can do the tight bend on the inside because we don't have dies small enough like this to get in there to allow it to do that radius. So I just need to mark on this side so I can do the bend and then I'll have to mark the fan, see if it fits the radiator, drill some holes. 
I got this all bent up, brought back over. Just sitting on here, I threw some weather stripping on the edge. Just, it'll help seal it and stop any rattling from happening. Now I just have two small fans. So to figure out like cutting your hole and stuff, once you have them laid out how you want them, you just take a Sharpie, mark the in inside, that'll give you your perfect circle to be able to cut that out. And I also moved the, the intercooler lower just so that it has better access for these to come out here. So now I can notch these away so that the pipe can just loop through there on each side. I'm figuring out how to mount the shroud physically to here and the CSF radiators come with these nice holes already here. They come about this size. I'm opening them up a bit because I'm actually going to put an M5 rib nut on all four corners and then I'll be able to just drill holes in the shroud and bolt straight to these four corners. I now have holes in the fran shroud. So Joel was working so I couldn't really film in here because he had music playing but as you can see it's a different design now. I cut the edge off of it because it was making this bow in the middle creating a gap. So now what's going to happen is it will sit just edge to edge like this and then I can go along and just tack it along here that will hold the shroud on and I'm just gonna rib nut all these points for the fans to bolt so all I did to get that was I sharpied on the inside gave me my outline and then I just sharpied these to figure out where the holes have to go so now I'm gonna get these rib nutted and then make sure everything fits before I bolt them and weld this to here because it will be pretty permanent. Except I can cut the tacks if I ever need to take it off. As you can see, I just quickly threw one rib nut in just so I could check what the depth was to make sure that it's not gonna hit the radiator fins. So now I'll know when I put the fans on to bolt them to make sure that they're not going any further than what that rib nut is to end up hitting these and damaging it. Okay, we got the fans mounted. They're bolted on here. And I also went ahead and I just threw a tack on each corner. I'm still trying to get used to TIG welder. So I tried to tack here. It didn't work out too good. I'll get Cricket to fix that right up. We'll be good to go. But yeah, I'll probably just, it'll probably just be tacked in a couple spots. It fits really good and doesn't have like a lot of room to move so I might just need a tack in each middle and it should be good to go it is time to now do the coolant lines on this car so I'm using 16 AN I got vibrant hoses from drift HQ walked on over there they had it in stock I was able to get it enough to do this and I don't think it'll take too much the lines are pretty short so I'm gonna set up the tripod measure up some lengths and see what we can get done. Okay, we now have one line made. It's just time, two AN wrenches, just these two guys and just keep cranking it on there. I like to try and line it up. It just makes a, it looks nicer aesthetically. So I also punched myself in the rib cage once in the process because the wrench slipped. So that, that feels good. I'm gonna get this on there and then measure the distance that I need before I have to cut it. Damn, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. Got the line cut. This cut is good. Ready to go. I just had the line held over here beside the fitting to see what length sort of would work and then cut it. So now I'm gonna put it together and then see how it is from there. We'll put it together on the bench so it's easier to see. We're now on the table and get this one taken apart. 
get this side made and then while it's out I'm also going to make the one for the lower radiator hose just so then I can put it in and then cut that hose to length and then the coolant lines are done. don't matter when you put the lines together. All right, we're over on this side of the car now. See how this line fits. That is one line done. All hooked up. Ready to pull some cooler. They're good to go. And it looks pretty good. There she is. This is just to allow for room for the intake pipe and everything. So just nice swoop. It's not collapsing anywhere. It stays nice and round. Now I'm just gonna make this one. I'm gonna put it together the fitting real quick. Don't want to make you guys watch that. And then I'll get this cut to length. This one now. Runs down to the bottom, clears, clears the fan as well, lots of room, came out good. This one, real good, getting, giving nice room, the throttle body, everything. So now, officially, the first thing's actually connected to the engine, by the coolant lines. Now, to move on to getting the turbo ready and fully mounting the intercooler so pipes can be made for it okay i am back from lime rock now it was a good weekend long drive to connecticut 48 hours all together for their and back round trip it was a good time though we did we camped had a good time but now back to this the next part we're gonna work on is making the turbo fit right there and in order to do so I got Drift HQ to order me two flanges, the male and female side, so that they go together, which will then make it so I can make a little pedestal that will hold hold the turbo in the spot that I need it, so that it'll clear the strut tower and the engine, and then not be too tall for the hood. So now I need to try to figure out a rough height and all of this stuff. I have a little cast piece from Cricut that was a cutoff and I'm gonna try to use this. Just cause I don't need it, it doesn't have to be big and it needs to be kicked a little bit. So this should work perfectly. Probably just need to shorten it a little bit. So we'll see what we can get made and I'll show you guys what we end up with. We now have a hood. We have the hood on just for mock-up because in order for me to fully decide how that's going to kick the turbo and where it's going to put it, I have to make sure that the turbo, pardon the light, will clear the hood. But thankfully, these have big hump here, so there is tons of room for the turbo. And I also want to make this just as short as possible, but make it so it centers the turbo and just makes easier for clearance on everything. So I'm just going to tape this in place to see how the turbo fits and go from there. I now have, I think the flange the size it needs to be for the little adapter here. And the V-bands are almost touching each other. But the turbo fits in here pretty perfect. Okay, so I've marked my flange with a couple marks just around it so I can line it up now with the actual 
V-band pieces when it's out of the car. So then I can just throw some tacks on it, put it back in, make sure everything fits in a square. And we'll be good. Now with the flange out of the car, you can see the few marks that I put there. And then that is just where it needs to go now. So tack that and then I can take the top flange off, line it up with my other marks and we will be good to go. Of course, my phone would die as soon as I started welding it. So I just quickly got it tacked together and we got it back in here. So just a couple tacks on there. Ooh, what? What is, whoa, whoa. We got turbo. We mounted up.